بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آل ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف دا لیکچر سیریز آن انٹرنیٹ ورکنگ ود لینکس اف یو ہیو ناٹ سین دا پریویس ٹو ویڈیوز آن دا ٹاپک آف ہینڈز آن کرپٹوگرافی آئی اسٹرانگلی ریکمینڈ دیٹ یو شوڈ فرسٹ سی دوز ویڈیوز اینڈ دین فال بیک ٹو دس سیشن Yes, dear students, in today's session we are going to talk about the long-awaited Secure Shell Server. When we discussed the Telnet server in Lecture 4, we observed that Telnet transmits all the data including passwords in clear over the network. That is, no encryption is done. And this we have observed when we were using the packet sniffer Wireshark. So due to serious security concerns, the Telnet server has totally been replaced by the Secure Shell server. Well, dear students, Secure Shell server is a cryptographic network protocol for operating network services securely over an unsecured network. It can be used on all Unices, Windows and Linux. rather on any device running linux like operating system for example mac android iphone and almost all sort of routers so you don't need to have physical access to the machine you can connect to a machine running secure shell service remotely using a secure shell client by giving the ip address or the host name of the remote machine You also need to give the port number which is by default 22 a username and a password Once connection is established the SSH client program can make different types of requests to the server like uh, mm, please log me in please uh, execute this command or maybe uh, you request to send a, or receive a file using the secure copy protocol as well last but not the least let me add that ssh also adds security to applications which are normally considered unsecure in general each tcp ip application like email clients and file transfer programs use a dedicated port to communicate but with port forwarding enabled entire network traffic from the client to the server can be multiplexed into a single port 22 thus making those unsecure programs secure so after this brief intro of ssh let us now move on to the linux terminal and uh, try to practically understand these concepts uh, for this session I will be using two machines as you want to server having the IP of uh, 192.168.1.100 and the Kali Linux having the IP address of let me sudo for this sudo if config 192.168.1.101 from the kali linux i should be able to ping 192.168.1.100 using the ip as well as i should be able to ping it with the host name ping ubuntu server yes it is working Now both the machines are connected and the first thing we need to do is we need to install secure shell server and client programs on the Ubuntu server and Kali machine respectively. Okay, uh, let us first install open ssh server on our Ubuntu server machine by apt get install open ssh hyphen server Okay. It is already the newest version. Let me do man ssh 
daemon this is the man page ok we will soon read this man page let me move on to Kali Linux and install OpenSSH client sudo apt get install OpenSSH hyphen client well this is also already the newest version well dear students after installing the secure shell server and secure shell client although we can start using them right away with default configurations let us see how we can configure them if you want if at all we want at some later stage let us first move on to the configuration of uh, Ubuntu server let me see the scale factor is already 200 so I cannot zoom it any further let me do man sshd and let me uh, read it sshd is the daemon program for secure shell and uh, that is the client together these programs replace our login and rsh and provide secure encrypted communication between two untrusted hosts over an insecure network please do read this at the time of your convenience let me right away go to the configuration okay so sshd underscore config this is the basically configuration file yes we can see sshd underscore config uh, from chapter 5 so sshd even can be configured using the command line options and it can also be configured using the file sshd underscore config let me let me quit this page and directly go on to the main page from chapter 5 sshd underscore config I want to get information about this configuration file okay so uh, it says sshd reads configuration data from at c ssh sshd underscore config so this is the location of this configuration file you can uh, read this um, contents uh, let me quit and open this file at c ssh inside ssh directory sshd underscore config let me open this file in vim okay so there are a lot of options which you can configure the default port is 22 my cursor is right on this line if you want to change it to some other port for security reasons you can always change that okay then if we come below we see host keys logging information and what else which I want to touch upon right now okay what about root login yes right gentlemen see this line on which my cursor is on permit empty passwords this must be no so that uh, nobody should be able to log in without passwords do see this option as well let me bring it to the top and that is permit log root login this one permit root login prohibit hyphen password uh, the default is uh, root cannot log in using password authentication however he can using RSA key pairs we will talk about RSA key pairs a bit later you can write a no over here if you do not want anyone to log in as root you can just replace this with no you can write a yes as well if you want to allow anyone to log in as root by giving a password so you should not do that for security reason and of course after you have made uh, changes to this configuration file you need to restart the sshd service let me quit and let me check out let me first stop this sshd dot service if you have installed it for the first time sorry system ctl stop sshd dot service now let me start this service rather check the status of the service 
first so it is not running let me start the service by systemctl start sssd service and now let me check the status again you can see this service is active and running now and it is uh, the server is listening on port 22 now let us move on to the client machine Kali and see the client configurations man SSH remember for the secure shell server I have done SSHD and for the secure shell client I am doing SSH well SSH client is a program for logging into remote machine and for executing commands on remote machine please do read the man page at the time of your ease right now I am interested in the configuration file whose name is over here as well SSH underscore config over there the configuration file name was sshd underscore config okay so it says that go to ssh underscore config this is the file you can view over here the ssh clients obtain uh, this uh, configuration information either via command line as shown over here first priority goes to the configuration given via command line and the second priority uh, goes to uh, the user's configuration file located in its home directory tilde.ssh config and the third priority goes to the global configuration file and that is at csh ssh underscore config okay let us uh, quit this and read the man page for ssh underscore config oops man ssh config so this is the man page it says the same thing which I have said before ssh of the ssh client obtains configuration data from the following sources in the following order command line options user specific configuration file that is in the home directory dot ssh directory config file and system wide configuration file that is at c ssh ssh underscore config please uh, do go through with this configuration file uh, whenever you are stuck doing something that is not covered in this session uh, right now let us move ahead and try connecting to the server default configurations okay let me let me create a user uh, on the server add user Mujahid and let me give a password to this user confirm the password and accept the personal information as such and press a Y at the end you can see ls or slash home the user Mujahid has been created over here and he has been assigned a password now let me move on to the Kali machine uh, who am I? I'm Arif. Let me add a user over here as well to start with a very blank slate. sudo add user Zalat. Let me give the password, confirm the password, accept the information, check the home directory sorry yes the user zalad exists its home directory has been created let me switch to user zalad by giving the password of zalad okay right now i am uh, zalad on the client machine and i want to log in onto the secure shell server as Mujahid okay so the command for this is we need to use the SSH client program SSH username Mujahid at the IP address of 
the Ubuntu server that is 192.168.1.100 you can always give the um, host name and then you can give the port number which is optional once I press enter it says the authenticity of host 192.168.1.100 can't be established ECDSA key print ECDSA key fingerprint is this this is SHA256 and he is asking me are you sure you want to continue yes or no well ECDSA is nothing more than a digital signature algo it is based on elliptic curve so it, this is elliptic curve digital signature algorithm now what is happening well dear students uh, the working of SSH can be divided into three stages in stage one which is going in front of us right now this is a stage which is uh, in progress what is happening behind the scene is it is negotiating a secure connection and a secret key that will be used for later symmetric communication so stage one is negotiating a secure connection and a secret key after this is successful the authentication of the user will be done and finally in stage 3 actual data transfer will take place so let us now discuss these stages uh, one by one let's talk about the stage 1 the SSH daemon was running on 192.168.1.100 and was listing on the well known port 22 let me see that let me clear screen let me do netstat hyphen ant oops okay let me grab uh, grab 22 you can see SSH is a uh, listing at port 22 192.168.1.100 column 22 this is uh, the uh, local machine and 192.168.1.101 is a port number on this you can see uh, the established connection well on, over here on the Kali machine the SSH client program initiated a TCP connection by sending information like protocol version the ciphers it supports and its public key in response to the client request the SSH server has sent a response containing the selected cipher to be used and its public key right now you can see the public key of the server this encrypted using SHA256 and displayed on the client screen okay let me move on to the server and check the public key uh, of the server to confirm you let me control L uh, SSH key generator I'm going to use this command SSH key gen hyphen L V uh, V option will also display the host key visually hyphen F and the file is at C S S H S S H underscore host underscore there are a lot of files over there you can press double tab and see those files the default file that is used is ECDSA underscore key dot PUP public so this is the key this key is um, visually displayed as well uh, you can note down the first few characters of SHA256 they are 5JDAJ 5JDAJ and the last few characters are EC0 last few characters you can see over here are EC0 so right now the stage is Ubuntu server has sent its public key to the client because this is the first time the client is connected to the Ubuntu server once the user types yes and press enter okay so it was just because I took a little bit of more time that's why the connection failed control C okay the file has been added let me remove that rm dot ssh known host gentlemen just forget about this point what I have done right now let me connect again 
and let me press yes now once I have pressed yes this public key has been added to a place and let me be the lad over here as well and let me do ls a you can see another directory over here that has just been created that we cd to this directory and you can see a file over here known host let me get this known host file so this has just been created and the public key of that uh, uh, server has been added over here along with some other information so once the user type yes and press enter the public key of the server is permanently added to this file in the home directory dot ssh known host so next time whenever uh, this user will add uh, will initiate the connection the server public key will not be displayed to be accepted Another step that has been performed in the background is both the client and the server have used Diffie-Hellman algorithm to arrive at a shared secret key as well which will be used to encrypt all the future communication. Gentlemen, let me repeat again. This is important. SSH protocol use asymmetric techniques to negotiate a secure connection and a shared secret key which we have just seen all future communication or you can say all data transfer is done using symmetric encryption now on the client screen you can see the server is prompting for the password of a user mujahid on on on, on the server so this is a stage two well the default settings for authenticating a user is password once the user enters the password, uh, let me enter the password and press enter. So once again, authentication failed. This is just because that uh, mm, we are taking too much time. The session expires. Let me let me repeat the command again. And this time you can see it has not displayed the public key because the public key of the server has already been added and has been accepted by the user Zalath. Now over here I have entered the password. I have pressed enter. And you can see I am on the prompt of Ubuntu server. So let me describe what has happened from this place. Oh no, from this place onward after I have given the password to the prompt the SSH server uh, asked me for the password I have given the password of user Mujahid remember Zilhad is not giving his password the user Zilhad on Kali machine is giving the password of user Mujahid which exists on Ubuntu server the SSH client generates the hash of the password and this uh, uh, password is generated of, 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 of the algorithm that has been negotiated between the user and the client uh, between the client and the server that is this is the algorithm uh, that is used uh, uh, by the server to save the password in the Etsy shadow file so this we have seen in the previous videos if there is a dollar six over there that means SHA512 so anyway once the user presses the password keys a hash of those password keys were generated and those were transmitted to the server the password hash once sent to the server the server compares it with the stored password hash of user Mujahid if a match is found a login shell is given to the user now over here whatever I will type let me type ls let me type who am I let me type if config whatever I am typing on Kali machine is encrypted using the shared secret key and sent to Ubuntu server machine let me create a file over here in the home directory of Mujahid uh, 
let me see unix is a simple operating system but you have to be a genius to understand its simplicity so I haven't sent this said this this has been said by Dennis Ritchie long time ago okay whatever commands uh, I want to use I can use over here and uh, let me exit from this and I'm done uh, so dear students uh, we're done with the three stages the three stages of um, the secure shell server the first stage was in which the connection was established and during that stage I said that the client and the server mutually negotiate a secure connection and arrive at a shared secret key the negotiating of the secure connection and arriving at the secret key is done using asymmetric encryption once the secret key is achieved by both of the client and the server our future communication is done using symmetric communication in the second stage the user was authenticated by using the password and finally in third stage the actual data transfer take place and that data is encrypted using the shared secret key that is symmetric encryption well dear students although passwords hashes of users are stored on server machines over here let me see them being root less at c shadow well these passwords are stored over here you can see these passwords the password of kakamana is over here you can see dollar six but programs like ncrack medusa and hydra which can be run from the client kali can launch brute force or dictionary attacks on secure shell servers and can gain access to your account so using passwords for authenticating a client is not a very secure way a more secure way of uh, a more a more secure way that secure shell server can use is using uh, is authenticating the user using ssh key pairs uh, when a user use ssh key pairs to authenticate himself he do not really need to give the password so uh, let us try let us try that the lad should be able to authenticate himself using the ssh keys right now i am on the kali machine which is the client i am the lad let me generate let me generate a rsa key pair by the command ssh hyphen keygen let me use rsa algorithm for that and let me keep the file uh, at their default location and let me keep the pass phrase empty you can see uh, it has created uh, okay let me do a hyphen a it has created a directory in over here and let me cd dot ssh and over here you can see it has created two files first is id rsa this is the file which contains the private key of the lad and this is id rsa dot pub which contains the public key of the lad and this known host file inside the home directory and dot ssh directory of the lad 
It contains the public key of the SSH server, which was created once we first connected to the server. Now the second task which uh, the lab needs to do is, he needs to copy his public key to the server. He needs to copy SSH hyphen copy, SSH hyphen copy hyphen ID and uh, just write down Mujahid H M U J A H I D Mujahid at 192.168.1.100. So SSH copy ID command will copy the file by prompting the password this time. And it says uh, a key has been added. Now you can try logging into the machine SSH Mujahid blah 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 and check to make sure that only the keys you wanted are added anyway let me go into the server clear screen and, and let me go to the home directory of Mujahid over here okay ls hyphen a you can say see the dot ssh folder over here you can see a file authorized keys over here so this is the public key of the lad from that machine from Kali machine that has been copied over here in the directory in his home directory inside their dot ssh directory in the file authorized keys so that file has been copied over there now let's try to log in again SSH Mujahid at 192.168.1.100 Once I press enter you will see I have not been prompted for any password and it has straight away taken me to the Ubuntu server I am on Ubuntu server now let me clear screen and let me do it again SSH Mujahid at 192.168.1.100 previously I was being authenticated by giving the pass password but now I'm not giving any password I am directly going into the Ubuntu server machine now how, how is it is working when a user sends a login request server generates a random number encrypted using the public key of the user and send it back to the client so that means when I initiate the connection server over here generates a random number encrypted using the public key and send it back to the client behind the curtain since the client has the corresponding private key because in the dot ssh directory we have the private key as well so the client can successfully decrypt that number the client then generates a hash of that number plus the shared secret key and send it to the server on the server side the server also generates the hash of the number plus the shared secret key and compares it with the one sent to the client if the two hashes match this authenticates the user and you are given a shell for for, for for the Ubuntu server for something that you requested okay let me clear screen again uh, dear students before we close our today's session as a bonus let me tell you about secure copy command as well that use SSH protocol behind the curtain over here let me exit remember right now I am Zilad and I am in the home directory which is empty and I know over here inside the home directory of Mujahid we have created a, a file F1 I just want to copy that file onto my Kali machine 
using the cp command this is not possible because cp is a command that is used to copy files from within the same file system of of this local machine if you want to copy a file from a remote machine to your local machine you need to use a command that is scp secure copy scp copies file between host on a network you must read this page let me execute this command scp first of all i need to give uh, the source file which is located on mujahid mujahid at 192.168.1.100 this is the machine and the username then i need to place a colon and and then i need to give the path of that file and over here you you can see the path of the file is inside the home directory mujahid directory and f1 so inside home mujahid and f1 so actually this is the machine we have a colon over here and then we need to give the path of the file and then we need to give the destination directory on the local machine and that is our, our, our present working directory so it says the file has been copied you can see cat f1 unix is of course a simple operating system but you have to be a genius to understand its simplicity and if you want to copy a file from your local machine to the server you can do that as well let me let me clear screen and let me create a file echo good luck and happy learning and let me redirect this to a file f2 okay let me copy this f2 file so this is a source file and the destination is the remote machine mujahid at 192.168.1.100 and the location is home mujahid you can see over here the home directory of mujahid contains only one file f1 and once i press enter you can see over here if i do ls the file is over there as well get f2 good luck and happy learning okay dear students uh, one more thing i just wanted to do but uh, uh, i don't have uh, time for that and i'm leaving that as an exercise and that is I want you to use a packet sniffer that we have used in the telnet session use Wireshark to capture the traffic that is going in between the Kali and the Ubuntu server and see whether if you can get the passwords as we did in the telnet session okay so uh, the session has gone a bit longer than my expectation and uh, I hope it was informative for you all. If you have liked it, please subscribe my YouTube channel and share it with your friends. Happy learning and Allah Hafiz.